Hello guys, this is Caesar Creates and welcome back to my channel. In today's video we are finishing our small mammal house. I was a bit unsure about adding this video because it doesn't consist any new animals or any new buildings. This is just putting some final touches to our small mammal house. But I remember that last time when I asked you guys if you want to see me build everything in our zoo, including parts of the nature, the background, etc. Or just habitats and main buildings. Some of you left comments that you would like to see me build everything because filling up those empty spaces between the habitats is sometimes challenging. And that is why I decided to make this video for you guys. So as you can see we are starting this video with building an entrance to our small mammal house. In case you haven't seen my latest videos, the small mammal house includes five small mammals that we have in game. We've built habitats for koalas, aardvarks, giant otters, Chinese pangolins and red pandas. And in this video I would like to tie it up together by finishing this building and the area around it. In last episode I actually built a very cool habitat for red pandas. And I would like to thank you guys for the amazing response to this video. I am a bit overwhelmed about all the positive comments, so thank you, thank you guys. And in case you haven't seen that video, I will put the link down in the description and on the screen. So definitely go and check it out. As you can see, I wanted to keep this entrance very modern, so I used a lot of glass and metal pieces. The building that was an inspiration to the small mammal house actually doesn't have an entrance for guests, so I had to improvise a bit. I wanted to build this entrance from glass because I also wanted to uh, uh, some planters with a lot of plants uh, inside by the entrance. And thanks to the glass, the plants can have some access to the direct sunlight. Also, because there will be some exotic plants inside of this building. And there is also an indoor koala habitat, which is basically open. The barriers are really low. The enclosure is not totally closed like other indoor habitats are in this house. That's why the temperature inside of this small mammal house must be stable. It cannot drop too low because it can be harmful to the koalas and to the exotic plants. As we all know, koalas live in Australia in warmer climates and that's how they also should be kept in a zoo. This is why I decided to add additional doors to this entrance. The additional doors create an airlock that prevents the cold air in uh, winter months from flowing inside this house when the guests are entering it. Of course it doesn't stop it 100%, but it's definitely more effective than having just one set of doors. The doors that I created are meant to be sliding doors. Of course, they won't move in the games, they won't slide. So let's pretend that they would actually do so. By the way, I kind of wish that we had something like this in this game. Like those doors to the walk-in habitats, they just open when the guests are approaching it. Also, it would be really nice to get like sliding doors for building that open, actually open when the guests are approaching. But we don't have them right now and we have to deal with it some way, so I created them by my own. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a bit happy that we are finished with this small mammal house. Don't get me wrong, I really like this build. I managed to recreate something that I had in my head, so I'm, I am really proud of it. But I cannot wait to like move on and start some other project, because I have so many ideas and I felt a bit that I am repeating myself with those enclosures. And I really want to take break from building animal houses like this for at least couple of episodes. 
But hey, I also realized that it is our 15th episode of the Elm Hill City Zoo. I don't know where all this time has gone by. I remember perfectly when I was very nervous before releasing my first episode with the entrance. And now we are on episode 15, which is crazy for me. Because as I said, I thought that I would be discouraged to recording those videos after four episodes or something but I continue and I really really enjoy it so there is definitely more to come you guys also flood me with your comments with your DMs so, so thank you thank you again I just sometimes it doesn't feel real for me that you uh, enjoy my builds so much so thank you again after finishing the entrance to this building, I will start to work on the sign of the small mammal house. At first I thought about uh, making this sign like, really similar to the facade of this building, but then I realized that it will probably blend a bit and I wanted to do something more spectacular. So I created a small rock formation from the new aquatic rocks. And I added this cute red panda statue on the top of it. I was a bit struggling with the fonts, uh, which I wanted to use there. There are so many uh, amazing fonts on the workshop that uh, were created by the players. And I wanted to use one of them. But the problem was that the stones are not perfectly flat and to use those fonts the surface needs to be flat because only the small part of the actual letters is sticking out of the surface and there's a lot of hidden parts of the uh, pieces uh, that are, the fonts are made of and I simply couldn't make it look good. Uh, so I used the uh, new uh, font that were uh, that was added to the game with the aquatic pack. It is really uh, like simple and modern, which I like, but I still have some issue with it looking a bit too big to the comparison of the actual rock formation, but I think it is slowly growing on me. After finishing the sign, I will start to work on the area around the uh, small mammal house. I always try to add those uh, small fences for the guests that prevent them from leaving the paths. This is something that I saw in many zoos and also something that I'm trying to add to every of my zoos. Guests, especially the kids, sometimes tend to leave the path because, for example, they want to see animals from different angles on, or the kids want to hide in the bushes or something like this. And those fences prevent uh, them from destroying the plants, the nature. They prevent them from making their own shortcuts inside the zoo. Some people may think that, for example, they won't, don't want to see certain parts of the zoo and they may cross the small forest or uh, another undeveloped part of the zoo just to get somewhere quicker. Those fences are meant to prevent that. Of course, people still can cross them, but it's not as easy as just walking over the curb of the path. As you guys know, in every of my videos I try to give you some fun facts about animals that we are currently adding to the game. In previous videos that didn't include any animals, I also tried to give you some fun facts. But I decided to change that a little. There won't be any fun facts in today's video or in future videos that won't include any animals. This is because I think that at one point I will simply run out of the ideas for the fun facts. Okay, uh, for example, today I could give you some fun facts about mammals in general because we are building small mammal house. But in 20 episodes uh, with no animals, I think that I will need to think like super hard to come up with some fun facts. And I don't want to give you guys some irrelevant knowledge just to key to stick to my fun facts in every video. I know guys that you enjoy them and if you will be missing them in those kinds of videos I will 
reconsider and maybe I will change my mind and I will give you some fun facts about some other aspects of the zoos or about animals in general. So let me know what you think down below in the comment section. But yeah, for now I decided to uh, skip the fun facts. Of course, in the next episode we'll be adding another habitat for an animal. I won't reveal right now what the animal would be. And there will be, of course, some fun facts about this animal. So definitely stay tuned to the next episode. If you want to see me build more habitats and want to hear more fun facts. Uh, the surroundings of the small mammal house are filled with temperate plants, some taiga plants and the plants that will simply be able to survive in the temperate biome somewhere in Europe. As I told you guys before, I always try to choose the plants by the climate that I am building my zoos in and whenever I build some houses or some big buildings I add tropical plants inside of them because it's easier to maintain those kinds of plants inside uh, in the enclosed environment and when I'm building an outside part of a habitat for example I also try to go with the plants that are appropriate for a biome even if an animal that I'm currently adding doesn't like them but believe me in real life the animal simply won't care about it the lion for example won't think that oh my god this tree is not a grassland african tree it is an european tree so i don't like it it just wouldn't care of course if you want to recreate the animal's natural habitats and you are not trying to stick to the realism of in this game, you are free to add whenever plants you want in whenever in whatever habitats you like. By the red panda and the Chinese pangolin habitats, you will see me building a small stone wall that is meant to prevent the soil from dripping down on the path. It is there because I plan to um, create there some sort of mountain or a hill. In the end, the name of our zoo is Elm Hill City Zoo and right now there are not a lot of hills in here. So this wall is meant to keep the soil like tight to prevent it from sliding into the path. And in the future I will add a uh, higher like hill behind it in this area and this is basically everything that i will do in this outdoor surroundings of this build actually i will also add some vending machines by the end of this video i was so happy when the vending machines were added i think it's super realistic to have them in the zoo they are a really cool addition and you don't have to build a huge restaurant now or a picnic area or whatever and you still can meet your guests needs of uh, thirst and hunger with those small machines that fit everywhere and and simply look very cool i created for them a small roof just to prevent the rain and the snow to directly uh, fall on them so that they wouldn't get destroyed by the water. Okay, and now let's talk a bit about what I will be building inside of this house. The inside of this building was a bit more completed than the outside part. I started the inside part with covering the plaster pieces next to the entrances with the same material that the facade of the building is uh, made of, those light colored uh, wooden planks. It's a bit of continuation of what we see outside and I think that it looks really cool and consistent. I also created planters uh, from the same material and I've put there a lot of plants so that when you enter this build you uh, right away get this vibe of uh, tropical animals living in there. Inside of such buildings in zoo you will have a lot of info, a lot of info boards not only about animals but also about environment, about the zoo in general 
some fun facts, some information about issues such as global warming and so on. And that was something that I wanted to add too. Of course, we had uh, some uh, info boards about animals already. I've built them for every species that we added to the small mammal house in every of the episodes. But we were lacking some uh, info boards with more general information. Of course, I added those uh, info boards that are uh, available in game. I'm not really sure how they are called right now, but there are those uh, info boards with information about uh, animal issues, about the environment conservation, about global warming and so on. So yeah, I added those, but I also found some info boards that I found on the Steam Workshop of Planet Zoo because they are simply amazing. They are so detailed and so realistic and I just knew that I won't be able to make anything better by my own. Also, I don't want those videos to be too long and creating those info boards take a lot of time. You will find the list of all the things that I used from the workshop in this episode down in the description of this video. So if you like a certain creation that I used uh, there, you can simply go there, uh, click the link and download it for yourself. I especially love the info boards created by the username called Ivar Asen. I hope I am pronouncing it in the right way. The info boards are called Celios info boards. They look so real and so good that when I found them I knew right away that I want to use them here. I use them by the both entrances. There are some general information about the environment on them and I think that they fit very very well to this space. Also, I created one big info board by myself. You will be able to see it uh, at the end of this video, but it is way more simple than the one that uh, I found on the workshop. Okay, that is all that I wanted to say to you guys today. Please enjoy the rest of this speed build. Stay till the end of this video because there will be some cinematic shots of the whole small mammal house and all the things that we created today. Please subscribe to my channel if you want to see me build more of the realistic zoos, realistic zoo habitats. And if you are looking for some inspiration for your virtual zoo, please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Ring the bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video. And comment down below if you have any questions or recommendations on how I can improve my videos or if you simply liked my video. I try to reply to all the comments. Thank you guys for watching, have a lovely day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!
Yeah. 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 Yeah.